I just had my lunch and I thought it might be a good idea to have a little stroll in the city. I'm being all quiet like because I'm trying to get this little one to sleep. I've already reached a point that I'm working on putting together the video. And I still haven't thought of a name for this sequence. So I thought that maybe I could work on an impromptu introduction. So anyway, the setup. It is still summer, but it seems like something is happening to my Aeoniums. So they deserve a bit of spotlight. I actually did several stuff with some of my Aeoniums recently, so without further ado, here goes. It's getting quite crowded around the sunburst, so I think it's about time I cleared up the area. If you gave them the space, this is how they would be growing. And they look nice in a small cluster like this. Otherwise, if you have them in a very cramped space, then they would just compete. And they would just be crawling all over the ground. Not really nice. Now that I've cleared up the area behind the sunburst, I was thinking of moving the sunburst up a level just to make it more prominent. Especially now that it's starting to push out lots of offsets. So I would want it to be the least restricted as possible so cleared out a space all to itself. I'd also like to remove these two large green Aeonium Arboreums. Despite their size I'm not really digging the I'm not really liking the texture that, the, that they're providing because my concept for this area was that the Starburst always had to be the main attraction because it has a huge rosette. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem to grow too tall, unlike the, the, the other green ones. So those two are out. And if you've been following my channel for a while, you might know that this Aeonium Short Blacks are my favorite. As you can see, it's starting to produce lots of offsets. This is good because I intend to create lots of them, spread them around this part of the garden. I'll be removing the other dark Aeoniums here. So I want to use a uniform texture. So I'll be removing this Aeonium Zwartko as well as this Aeonium Velour together with this Aeonium Atropurpureum All of these will be going out we'll to move them somewhere else I guess 
so it's going to be mostly the short black providing the dark parts of the design uh, these small green ones over here are are actually the Aeonium Blushing Beauties normally they would be quite red but they're not getting enough sun at the moment especially with the shade cloth about, above them I'm thinking of keeping these guys they would be the green to contrast against the, the short black they won't stay green throughout the seasons although I'm hoping that they would be getting a bit more color again once I remove the shade oh and before I forget you might have seen in one of the videos that I, when I cleaned up this area, I revealed uh, a small patch of decorum. And look at them now. They're formed in nice tight rosettes to the untrained eye, for, especially if you're not familiar with them. They look a lot like the kiwi, the variegated haworthy. The differences are subtle, but once they grow large enough, you'd be able to tell. I was hoping to be able to show you the differences, but they're still too young right now, so maybe some other time. So as you can tell, I've got lots of plans for this Aeonium patch. But seeing that it is summer at the moment, my Aeoniums are still dormant. Although there's, although there's a bit of growth since sometimes we have the, the cold days during summer. But yeah, that's Melbourne. I think I'm going to push work on this area until after summer. Summer ends in February and March is the start of autumn. So I'm expecting to be able to work on this area towards the end of February. can see this aeonium has completely dried out and this is after it has flowered and from the looks of things there are no new buds that came out so I may as well just discard this could recall there used to be a flowering Aeonium Urbicum over here so the Urbicum is similar to this one but the one I had here last time was much larger and since it has flowered and has completely dried up I decided to pull it out and replace with an Aeonium Starburst like the Urbicum the Starburst goes pretty large and I think it would fill up the place nicely what I have here is an Aeonium Starburst and as you can see, it has a large rosette, a large head. And this is how large uh, an Aeonium sunburst should get once it achieves maturity. And as you can see, the sunburst at the moment is quite small. I've had this for about for close to two years, a year and a half, I guess. When I originally got it, it was only this big. And compared to what it is now, within those one and a half years, it grew bigger but just by a bit so as you can tell the sunburst is a slow grower the primary difference between the starburst and the sunburst is the variegation the starburst has the variegated part the center of the leaf if you look at the sunburst the variegated parts are at the edges of the leaf this particular one seems to have reverted a bit but this is mainly because it's not receiving enough sunlight Unfortunately, it has to stay this way for a while because right now we have the shade cloth at the top protecting them from the sun But after summer come autumn, I'll be removing a shade cloth and Hopefully this would be receiving enough sunlight And I'm hoping that by then it would be going back to its previous striking appearance and I just remembered that I put one of my sunburst cuttings at the top of the shelf. So let's have a look As you can see, compared to the mature sunburst I have in the ground, 
This one has a lot more markings and this is mainly because it has been getting a bit more sun. It's at the top of the shelf anyway. And I'm hoping that the larger rosette would look like this once autumn and winter comes. And once again you've had a look at my Aeoniums and as you know they're my second most favorite genus. And from this episode you could probably tell by now that you could expect more Aeonium content after summer. Right now they're still dormant but once they get out of dormancy there would be a lot of stuff that I have to do with them. So look forward to that. And it's time once more to thank my Patreon supporters. Oscarino, huge thanks to you man. As for everyone else, you could you could check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash seriescapades. And it's time to wrap up this episode. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.